Hello, everyone. Welcome to Health Talk. I'm Evelyn Hatfield. And I'm Vicki Graham. The month of May is considered Mental Health Awareness Month, and this will give us an opportunity to take a break to think about what mental illness is and to learn as much as possible so that we can also get rid of the stigma that's often associated with mental illness. Today we have a special guest, Cynthia Dudley, who is visiting us from Trillium, and we'd like to welcome you today for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes. This is exciting. Yeah, we're excited to hear that you're here. <laughs> um, let's start off first by asking you if you can just tell us a little bit about what you do, just okay. in general. Well, um, we have Trillium Drop-In Center, which is in the community. It's in Prince William County um, in Woodbridge. And we're a drop-in center for people with mental illness, for people who are over 18. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a whole bunch of staff who um, are people living with mental illness. So we try to um, help people in their mental health recovery from the peer pr perspective. So we're providing peer services for Prince William County. Okay. For those people who don't know what peer is, mm -hmm. can you explain that a little bit? Well, it's the it you know it's just the term that we use for people who are living with mental illness. Um, some people um, use the term consumer, mental health consumer, um, and what we do is we consider someone else that has a mental illness as well as okay. a peer. So we're equal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so how how does that peer person help? Myself, I was diagnosed with a whole bunch of mental illnesses, including PTSD, depression, um, a dissociative disorder, and anxiety years ago. And I worked myself on my own mental health recovery for a lot of years, and it was a lot, a lot of hard work. Um, and I've been stable for about um, 15 years now yeah. without any crises, major crises. You know, I still have emotion like any like other everybody. human beings, yes. but I don't get into the suicidal um, attempts, suicide attempts or, um, you know, isolation or um, the word where you can't, oh, um, agoraphobia, you know, okay. where, where I couldn't leave my you house, you know. So I've been stable in um, myself for about 15 years, and so what we do, um, myself and my staff and other people as well, you don't have to work somewhere in order to be supportive for someone with a mental illness, but um, my staff works really hard in encouraging and promoting mental health recovery for every, everyone that comes to Trillium and, and beyond. We do things in the community as well. Okay, mm -hmm. that's, that's a good introductory that you mentioned about <laughs> self-isolation, because I think that's critical. Yeah. That sort of relates to the Trillium Center. Can it you does. tell us about that and how yeah. it helps to keep someone from isolating? Well, we try. You know, we're trying to get people, because when you, you know, when you live with a mental illness, you really, most people um, think that they're alone and no one else mm -hmm. un can understand them or no one else can really um, relate to them, you know. Mm -hmm. and. And I know I went through that myself where I isolated. I didn't want to be around people because it was really hard to deal with what was going on internally and externally, too. So what we try to do um, at Trillium is get people in the door and help them feel safe, right? So okay. we're providing that physical and, emotion and emotional safety, which is so important when you're dealing with mental illness, you know? Mm -hmm. So we're trying to um, create the atmosphere safety at all at all times and hopefully people will keep coming back and you know um, learning how to manage their mental illness and get stable and start thriving in life again you know mm -hmm. so we're trying to encourage all of that yeah, That's it, wonderful. it's it's interesting that you mention emotional safety because it's huge Yes, because I suspect that people will say things because they don't understand yes. mental illness. Yes. And so being in a place where pretty much most of the people understand you is yeah. a way to sort of help with that. Well, you know, we don't always get it. We don't we don't understand 100 percent of it. I mean, you know, who's going to under, understand anyone 100 percent? But mm -hmm. we're going to make it safe enough so that people aren't triggered. Like 
we have people that come in to the center that have PTSD. Okay. Right? And um, we have one um, woman who was in the Pentagon on 9-11 when it was struck. Oh, wow. Right? Yeah. So she has um, schizophrenia. She was diagnosed with schizophrenia. And then she also has PTSD on from being in the that. Pentagon. And so um, we have to be very careful that she's not triggered because if she's triggered, it'll um, start, her symptoms will kick in. Right? Okay. So one thing that we have to be sure of, and not just for her, but for everybody that comes in, is we don't allow violence or sexually suggestive stuff on our yeah. TVs or mm -hmm. computers. You know, so um, we don't we we want to make it a safe space for everyone. So we watch language and we don't let people get too high, you know, or too too angry or too expressive. We just okay. keep it very um, very safe. So that's try. what you mean when you say triggers, like that's no, a trigger, yeah. yeah, like someone. Well, yeah, um, you know, somebody can be triggered by something on TV, or you know, yesterday I um, I was triggered myself. It was kind of a tough day for me, but um, you know, I read an article about um, a de depersonalization disorder, which is what I was diagnosed okay. with. So it went into some detail about what people go through. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was a trigger. And so, you know, my symptoms kicked in a little bit and I sort of had to hunker down and, um, you know, do some really, a lot of really good self-care mm -hmm. so I could get through through the moment. So what we're trying to do is help people get to that place where they can get beyond what they're going through a little bit better. Okay, good. good. We'll try. Yeah. That self-care is important, and it's different for everyone, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're all different, right? Yeah, and correct. We're all, we're all different, and so what you do for yourself correct. is probably not what I do right. for myself or other, right. you know, but we try and figure it out, and so what we're trying to do is encourage people from where they are, mm -hmm. right? We had one young man, if you don't mind me talking about uh, one of our success stories. I was going to ask yes. you oh, that next. Okay. Well, successful. one person is definitely the woman that came in, that comes in, um, that was, she's definitely a success story, the one that was in the Pentagon when it was hit, because okay. she's now functioning, and, and she's doing great. She can't shut yeah. her up. She's always joking around <laughs> with me. You know? Yeah. Um, but we have one young man who was um, separated from his family, from his wife, and um, he had just gotten out of the hospital. He's diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And um, when he first came to the center, I don't know, four or five years ago, maybe six, I don't know, um, he would sit in one part of the center and um, just play on his computer. You can bring your computer mm -hmm. to Trillium, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, when the room was clear, he would start playing pool, right? And when someone came back into the room, he would go back to his computer because he was just terrified. He was just terrified. He was okay. hom homeless. He's a vet. And he was just um, mm. separated from his family. And he had just gotten out of the hospital. So he was in pretty fragile condition. Okay. And so we would just say, hi, how you doing? You know, very gently. And then keep moving. You know, we wouldn't push mm, we wouldn't what push we him. thought he should do. It okay. was, okay, respect his space respect what he needs to do, and then when he's ready, he'll take a step. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. we try to encourage people from where they are. We don't Correct. try and push our beliefs on others. Mm -hmm. You know, at least, we, you know, it's hard, but we try. Mm -hmm. That sort uh -huh. of reminds me that the support, your support system is really valuable. So if you don't have that in a family, perhaps they get some yeah. of that at Trillium. Yeah, I didn't get it from my family. Mm -hmm. They didn't really understand, which I, you Sometimes know, that is some people don't mm -hmm. understand, but um, so we, we try to, we try to do what we can for what, you know, whoever we can that has the mental illness. Yeah. We just see people who are over 18, they have to be over 18 mm -hmm. okay. and they have to be able to follow some rules that's, you know, the, we're pretty strict about the behavior to create yeah. the sense safety. of safety, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. there may be some people that aren't, that don't have the self-control at the time, but then they can, you know, work on it and come back. We're, you mm -hmm. know, we're very open and we believe in recovery. Mm -hmm. We believe people can and do recover. And they do recover. Yeah. Absolutely. So what about someone who doesn't speak English? How That's is a that tough environment one. for yeah. them? Yeah, we have some people that come in that do speak on other languages, mm -hmm. so they can connect, you know. Or um, we're off. We're very patient with people that don't um, speak a lot of English. Yeah. Or okay. last week, um, I was trying to 
a painter was doing some work on one of our walls and I was trying to um, ask him to brighten it up but he doesn't speak English he only speaks broken English so I just went to Google and said what's the you know what's the translation for bright and so I you know I googled it and I said look this is the word you know and he knew exactly what I needed right? so we're don't we're willing to solve this. Yeah, no. we are. Yeah. We we try to get it done. Yeah. We try to get it done. Wonderful. You know? And we, you know, there's about, we see 35 to 40 people every single day. Wow. Okay. And um, so we're pretty busy most every day. Mm -hmm. Tell us a, a little bit about those activities. I know before we oh. came on, yeah. we were talking a little bit about some of the activities you all do oh. to sort of help raise money and things oh, like that. That, that, that. Well, we have a lot of fun, too. That's what I thought you were trying to get well, at. Well, that, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> fun, fun. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. We, do, um, we do a lot of activities at the center to, you know, get okay. people connected and stuff like that. But we also, in the community, like we're coming up on... Um, the June Arts and Crafts Fair in Occoquan. Okay. And um, so some of our artists get together and and we do art at the we do jewelry making at Trillium and then we sell it at Occoquan, okay. which is kind of fun, you know. So people bring in their own stuff and then we do it at Trillium too. And then we try to talk to the community about the services that we we have, which is kind of important because people you know need to know about us. Ooh. And then um, we just launched a note card mine, which is yeah. phenomenal. We're, I'm so excited about it. Tell us about yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> so as you guys know, there's a lot of creativity in the world. Well, some of our um, members are painters and artists. And so um, we took some of the art from our members and um, have created a note card line. And they're pretty... Um, oh pretty nice high quality cards okay. with the art on it. So we're, um, my hope is to um, use it as a fundraiser both for um, Trillium services and mm -hmm. peer support services, not just in um, for Trillium, but in the community as well. There's so much more to more work to do, but there's yeah. not always a lot of funding. Yeah. So I'm hoping that it can be a funding stream for Trillium and also income for the artists. Mm -hmm. When is that, you expect that to come out? It, I, I sent out the press release um, last week. Oh, so yeah, it's Yeah, so ready. it's trickled out. I haven't hit the community big yet, but I hope too soon. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah, we did a, yeah, we did a mental health awareness month display at Chin Library. Okay. Which is a pretty nice display if I do say so myself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, that's good. Um, but we put the cards, a couple of cards in there to try and um, just, you know, break it softly. Yeah. You feel good when you produce something, don't you? Yeah, it's a really good nice. Product. And, we try to get creative, you know, in ways to help people. I mean, that's what, really what it's about is helping another person, another mm -hmm. human being. And mm -hmm. so that's really Im important, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think. A couple other things you mentioned. You mentioned about a United Nations event oh. you all went to in 2014. We did. And you also, I want you to tell us about that, but also mental health awareness event that's coming up in October of this oh, year. Yeah. Tell well, us about both of oh those. Oh, my gosh. You, I get so excited about all this <laughs> That's stuff, good. Guys. Um, back in 2014, myself and one of my employees went with me to the United Nations. I mean, the United Nations, are you kidding? Oh, you God, know, we went wow. to the um, NGO conference and talked about, you know, what it's like for a nonprofit to work with um, professionals. So okay. we have a partnership with the CSB and other organizations in the community. Mm -hmm. And so we um, we did a little presentation on what that's like and you know how it can be tricky yeah. sometimes, but we usually do really good, you know, because we have common goals. Yeah. You know, so that uh -huh. was that was um, one of the biggest wow. honors of my life. Oh, Wonderful. One of the yes. biggest. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and um, so that's exciting. But then we also, every single year in October, we work mm -hmm. in partnership with the Community Services Board mm -hmm. and um, NAMI Prince William um, come together and create this fabulous event in October. It's usually, um, well, this year it's going to be on October 12th. And it's a Wednesday night. It's going to be at the Forlaza building. And we have a couple hundred people coming in to celebrate mental health recovery because how fantastic is it to have someone who lives with a mental illness live a full and productive right. life or mm -hmm. reach for you know their goals and and achieve them and 
So we try to um, bring everybody together to try and, you know, kind of celebrate mm -hmm. and decrease stigma and... Yeah, you know, I fun. went last year. It was really great. Wasn't it a blast? Yes, yeah. especially the keynote, well, your panel. You all had a panel on and a keynote yeah. speaker. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. really, really good. Yeah. But people tell their stories. I know. Yeah. How fabulous is that? I know. Because I guess that brings to mind the whole issue about recovery and then yeah. the stigma that's associated with it. People automatically think a certain thing about people because they have a mental illness, thinking that that's... Almost like a death sentence it when it's not. Is, I no, it isn't. You know, when I was in my darkest, darkest days, mm -hmm. um, I couldn't move very much. And I would stand on my um, my porch and just mm -hmm. stand there. And I, was, I, I have PTSD and I have a depersonalization disorder. And I couldn't manage it. Mm -hmm. back, back then I was not mm -hmm. uh, managing it well. And I would stand there and I wouldn't be able to move, you know, because I was so afraid. Mm -hmm. And um, I had the neighbor, neighbor kids actually call me a freak. Because mm -hmm. I was, you know, weird. I was weird, you know, but they it, they didn't it have didn't to be notice. so hurtful. Yeah. You know, but people think that because you have a mental illness, there's something mm -hmm. wrong and you're not normal and you're, you know, and a lot of people have the misperception that they're going to, that people with mental illness commit crimes I when know. actually yeah. the reverse is true. Isn't it well, true? Well, right? crimes are yes. committed against them. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. The statistics prove it. Mm -hmm. And so the the less people could be afraid of people with mental illness, I think the better mm -hmm. off the whole country would be. The true meaning of recovery, <sighs> which means, you know, you live a normal life, you do the things that people will be expected to do. And but to talk I in try. 2014 at that, I com I you know? Look at me, how many people have done that, you know? Yeah, but yeah. you know, I gotta say, I miss a lot of life. You know, trying to work it out. I was trying, you know, I worked mm -hmm. hard trying to work mm -hmm. it out and get to something stable, you know. And I still, you know, I still fall down in some places. Mm -hmm. There's some yeah, things I can't do. Mm -hmm. I still get triggered. Mm -hmm. And I still, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm not going there because it's going to trigger me. Do you know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. And to. so um, I, tr I try and I try, I try so hard to empower the other people that are in our community yeah, to yeah. to do the same you know the, do we do I have time for one more success you, story? You do, and if you could tell us that success story as quickly as possible because we are at the end, but <gasps> you're just a Amazing. Oh, go ahead. Go thank ahead. You. I just love what I do, you guys. We I can just tell. love it. Yes. I have one more success yeah, story go that ahead. I have to mention. Uh -huh. There's this woman who um who um when I first met her, she was she was she she was one of those people who didn't want to leave her house, you know. Mm -hmm. So I met her gently and um and she was the kind of person that would just go to one grocery store. She couldn't go to any other stores because that was her comfort zone. Okay. She knew where everything was and she knew, you know. So she had like this particular small piece of life that she she was living quite yeah. successfully. But I was like, there's, you know, I'm, I'm kind of whispering to her, there's more, there's more, you know. Yeah. Gently, come on, come on, come on. She is the one that went to the United Nations with me. Oh, wow. I love she that. can stand oh. up in front of 200 people and say, look. This is about mental health wow. recovery, and we need to stop stigma. Wonderful. You know, I, um, that's that, the that kind is, of stuff we need to hear. That's about. a goosebump yes. story. Yes, isn't it? it's that really yes. is. Yeah. It's wonderful. I get proud. Well, you should be proud. Yes. Thank you so Thank much you for, for sharing me. your story. Thank you for having me. And I hope you all um, were able to get something out of today's session. As you can see, um, recovery is the main thing. And we just thank Cynthia for joining us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining us.